You're ready to tackle knitting socks from toe to cuff with short circular needles, but you're not quite sure where to start. I've got you covered. In this tutorial, we're going to tackle knitting those socks from toe to cuff using short circular needles. So grab your needles, your yarn, and the pattern, which you'll find linked down below, and let's start knitting. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter, and I believe that knitting is a form of self-care. You can take time for yourself and your creative pursuits, but still create beautiful garments and accessories that you love to wear. In this video, it's all about that accessory, the sock, specifically the toe-up sock, and even more specifically, how to knit them with short circular needles. We're gonna go through everything from casting on at the toe, all the way to finishing the cuff and the heel. We're gonna be using a round toe and heel construction. The heel's going to be placed using like a peasant afterthought heel where we put some waist yarn in and then pick up the stitches after. But I've got some tricks for making that super easy as well. So you'll wanna get your yarn, sock yarn of course, your short circular needles, and you'll find the pattern linked down below. Let's go to the overhead and get a look at the sock construction and a closer look at the supplies we're going to need. To knit our socks, of course, we're going to need some sock yarn. So I've got two different colors here. I'm gonna do a contrast toe and heel and then a second color for the leg and the foot of the sock. I'm using Alley Cat Yarns. This is Smooth Sock in Beck and Peahen. It's a blend of 85% superwash and 15% nylon. So you just wanna find a suitable sock yarn for your socks. We're also going to need some needles and this tutorial is for using shorty needles, nine inch or 23 centimeter short circular needles but we can't knit the toe and heel completely with these because at some point we're gonna have too few stitches and we can't work in the round on these needles. So we're going to need another method. So you could use double point, two circulars, magic loop, whatever method you like. The only other issue is when we're knitting the toe, you are going to need a flexible cable for the cast on. So double pointed needles won't really work for that. I'm choosing to use a magic loop method with a 32 inch cord here. We're also going to need a beginning of round marker that we can lock into place and then some stitch markers for our heel. We'll also need some waist yarn. I'm just gonna use whatever opposite color I have from the heel along with some embroidery floss or something for a lifeline and then a tapestry needle for weaving in ends and for placing the lifeline as well. Let's take a quick look at the sock itself. It's just a small shorty sock. We're going to start with the figure eight cast on right down here at the bottom and then work increases to create this round toe shape. Then we'll switch to our main color. Of course, you can just continue knitting this all in one color if you prefer. And at this point, we'll be working on our short circular needle to fit to knit the length of the foot of the sock. Then we'll be stopping and placing a couple of lifelines and some waist yarn to mark the location for our heel. Then we will go and finish the length of the sock. This is where it's very adjustable. You can knit as long or as short as you want for your sock leg, making sure you do about at least an inch or so. Then we will purl one row or one round before we do some more stockinette so we can let that cuff roll and finishing with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And then we will come back, put our stitches back on our needles and work our heel shaping, which is also just like the toe, but worked in reverse. This we start at the very tip and increase to get the shape. Here we are working along this side and then decreasing down to just a few stitches. And we're doing a longer shape here so that our heel is a little bit deeper. So you wanna get your supplies and the pattern and knit along with me. Now this pattern only comes in four sizes because it is hard to knit on short circulars unless you have enough stitches so it's really you can't do very small small socks even with short circulars probably nothing less than about eight inches in circumference I suppose and this is a nine inch circumference needle so it's only available in four sizes so we can have enough stitches to actually work on our short circular needles first thing we need to do is cast on and for the cast on we need a flexible cord to hold our stitches as we're working half of them so after you're done casting on, you can switch to double pointed needles if you prefer, or just stick with magic loop or two circulars. We need to start with a slip knot though. So I like to pinch the yarn, wrap it around my fingers, pinch it between the thumb and first finger, wrap a second time to the left of the first wrap, pinch that one. Then I take one of my needle tips between the two, scoop that second loop through the first, and then tighten it up. And there's a slip knot or use any slip knot method you prefer. You just need to have a slip knot on that second needle. This is needle two and this is needle one. It's on top of needle two. So to cast on, we're gonna use the figure eight cast on. 
get that yarn tail out of the way. So we take our working yarn, we come behind needle one, and then between the two needles, and then under needle two, and back up between the needles. And that's two stitches cast on. We're just gonna repeat this process until we've cast on eight stitches all together, four stitches on each needle, not including the slip knot. So up above needle one, between the two needles, around needle two, and between the two needles. Up and around, and between, beneath and around, and between. One more, up and around, and then the last one, oh, I dropped that one, and between, and we wanna hold that in place. We have all of our stitches here. We're gonna pull needle two, so those stitches are gonna rest on the cord. And then we're going to knit across these stitches on the top, and we wanna hold on to that yarn tail or the working yarn so it doesn't unravel everything. So I'm gonna use magic loop, so I'm just gonna grab the other end of this needle, but any method you like, two circulars or whatever, would work here, and just knit these four stitches. And you can see it's very loose and floppy, we're gonna hold on to that working yarn. I'm gonna pinch it actually with this needle so I can turn my work. I'm going to slide the stitches from needle two back up onto their needle. I'm still sort of pinching everything together right there. And now needle one, you can slide those stitches onto their cord and that will hang out there while we work across the stitches on needle two. So make sure you have your working yarn in your hand. You don't want to drop it yet because everything will just sort of unravel. We can take that slip knot right off and that is done. And you can see it's just looped around there. We don't want to lose it, so hold on to it. And the stitches on this needle too are mounted with the right leg in the back. And we don't want to twist our stitches, so we're going to knit these four stitches through the back loops. Oops, get my tail out of the way. And they're gonna be pretty loose, but we can use our yarn tail and our needle tip to close them up. So knitting these through the back loop. So cast on is complete. It's gonna be a little bit loose right there, those few stitches in the middle, but we can use our yarn tail to adjust them if we have to. Now we can start actually knitting the toe and you can use whatever method you want there's not enough stitches for our short circulars yet, so use magic loop, two circulars, the DPNs, whatever you wanna use. So I'm gonna use magic loop. I'm in my starting position, making sure I, hold, I have my working yarn and not the tail. So I can take the stitches on the bottom needle and slide them onto the cord and knit across these top stitches, making sure I'm using my yarn and not the tail. So to start our toe we're going to work yarn overs for the increases and our first round is going to increase double our stitch count basically so the first thing we need to do is yarn over if you have the yarn in your left hand you're just going to put it over your needle like that so you have that yarn around the needle and then you can knit one yarn over knit one yarn over knit one yarn over and knit one and be careful of that tail once we get a few few more rounds on here, this will be just fine. But you wanna be careful at first because it can still feel a little bit loose. We're gonna repeat the process with the other half of our toe. So if you have the yarn in your right hand, you would do the same thing. You've got the yarn right there. You're just gonna bring your needle underneath and that gives you that yarn over. And then you can knit your first stitch and then you would yarn over again and continue working across just that first yarn over can be a little bit finicky so yarn over knit yarn over knit yarn over and knit and now we have 16 stitches instead of the eight that we started with So following an increase round, we need to close up those yarn overs. We don't want to leave them open or we'll have little decorative holes in our toes. And we really don't want that in a, this toe sock pattern. 
So we're going to close them up. So the first stitch is a yarn over. You can see it sitting right there. If I knit it through the front, it's going to leave a big hole. So what I want to do is knit it through the back. And if I can't quite get my needle in there, I can start on the front, bring it up and around, and then it's in the back. Then I can knit it through the back loop, knit a stitch, and there's that hole. If I knit right into it, it's going to make a hole. We don't want that. So I want to go through the back. And if you're having trouble, then bring it to the front, but then slide it around to the back and then knit it through the back. And that closes up that hole. And being careful of our loose stitches right in the center and turn and we'll repeat this process with the other half of the toe. So knit that yarn over through the back loop to close it. Knit one through the back loop. Knit one. Okay, so now you can see our toe is starting to emerge. And at this point, we can place a marker just so we know where the beginning of round is. And we can move it as we get more fabric. But I like to just have one on there just so I know that this side right here is the beginning of the round. And for round three, we are just going to knit. You're going to knit all the way around all the stitches. Now it's time for our second increase round. So get yourself in position for that. So this time we're going to work that yarn over again just at the beginning like we did. You're bringing the yarn around the needle for that first yarn over. This time we're going to knit two instead of just knitting one. So yarn over, knit two, yarn over, knit two, and repeat that all the way around. So there is half the sock and I will repeat that on the other side as well. So again, if the yarn's in your right hand, you'll bring the yarn over your needle. That'll make the yarn over, and then you can knit one. Or knit two. And then a yarn over, and knit two. And so on until you get to the end of the round. There, so after an increase round, we repeat rounds two and three. So round two is knitting all the yarn overs through the back loops and knitting the rest of the stitches. And then round three is just knitting around. And then we're gonna repeat our increase around again, but adding another stitch between each yarn over. So there's that first yarn over, knit it through the back, knit two, knit it through the back, and knit two. And I'll do this all the way around, closing the yarn overs. Then I'm going to do another knit round as well. Now we're ready for our next increase round. And this one, we are adding another stitch between those yarn overs. So we had a yarn over, knit two. So now it's going to be a yarn over and knit three. Yarn over, knit three. So we're adding eight stitches every time we work an increase round. And we're placing another stitch between each yarn over on each increase round. So the next increase round, it'll be yarn over, knit four, and then yarn over, knit five. And then between each increase round, we have those two plain rounds where we're knitting and closing up our yarn overs. So we're gonna keep repeating this process until our toe is large enough and that's all spelled out in the pattern. So yarn over knit three. So I have a lot more increases to work here. And two, three, yarn over knit three. So that's an increase round. So I would follow that by rounds two and three where we knit around closing up our yarn overs. So you're just gonna keep doing this, increasing by eight stitches and placing another stitch between each yarn over, like yarn over knit four and then yarn over knit five on each subsequent increase round until your sock 
has the number of stitches you require. And it's all spelled out in the pattern. So I'm just gonna keep repeating these rounds until I have 72 stitches. But there, the other size is it will tell you how long to keep knitting this sock round until you have the right stitch count. So it's just this increase round, adding another stitch, between each of the yarn overs and then doing two rounds of plain knitting in between and closing up those yarn overs. But one thing I did wanna mention, if you happen to forget a yarn over, it's very easy to pop one in. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna knit that first one through the back loop. Knit three. And there's the next one right there. But if I'd forgotten it, I mean, it's gonna leave a hole here anyway, but if I had, it's basically a make one. You would look for the yarn that's between these two stitches, which is right here, because I had it for the yarn over to begin with. But if I didn't have it, there would still be a strand of yarn there. It would still be a little tight. So I could pick it up from front to back, pop it up on my needle, and then knit it through the back leg. So you would basically just do a make one right if you forgot a yarn over wherever that yarn over was supposed to be, just use a make one right. You could also replace the yarn overs with a make one right if you prefer that instead. I just think it's a lot easier to do a yarn over in like little sock yarn on little needles than it is to do a make one sometimes. So you just continue increasing followed by two knit rounds until you're at the stitch count you need and then you'll move on to knitting the foot of the sock. When the toe is complete, this is what it looks like. You can see the spirals formed by those yarn overs and I was moving my marker up periodically just to keep it on that side where the beginning of the round was. And now you can, when it's big enough, you can tuck the yarn tail inside as well. But now it's time to move on to the leg of the sock. I'm using contrasting yarn for that. So I'm just gonna break this yarn. You don't have to do this if you just wanna work it all in the same color. Ooh, that doesn't wanna break. Let me grab some scissors. Strong yarn. Okay, so I'm finished with this color for now till I work on my heel. I'm gonna introduce the sock color I want for the leg. And at the same time, if you haven't already, you can transfer your stitches to your short circular needle. So I just do this, I just knit them. I don't slip them or anything like that. Just gonna push them up on the needle. Grab those yarn tails together, both of them and then just start knitting from this magic loop needle, this long circular to my short circular. And you're gonna find that you've gotta find a way to hold these short tips. They're, these are, I think, three inches long or shorter, maybe two and a half. They're not very long. So you might have to work on how you hold them as you're knitting with them. I find I just use a few fingers sort of to pinch them together and that seems to work just fine. But I do encourage you to try to relax because they're so short, it's very easy to sort of tense up and grip them really tightly, which just makes your whole body sore. You'll end up with short shoulder, shoulders and arms. So try to relax and just like use just a few fingers to grip them and use this sock as a learning experience to just test them out and see how you like short circulars. You might find that you love them. You might find that you really dislike them, but you won't know until you try. So I am working in my contrast color. I'm just transferring all of these stitches to my short circular. And then when I get to the end, I will place a marker for the beginning of round because we're just gonna be knitting the foot of the sock until it's as long as we need it to be. And that will be about three inches shorter than we want for like the heel placement. And then we're gonna stop and place our waist yarn and some lifelines for the heel. So there's half my stitches. So I can take this needle here, slide them up and continue knitting. This could be a bit fussy trying to get them moved over, but just trying to get things. This is easier, I think, than trying to slip them all to your other needle. And there we go, we're right at the end. So I'm done with this needle for now until we get to our heel. So I can get everything up on there, put a marker in, 
for the beginning of the round. And then just continue knitting in the round. I want to hold those yarn tails to keep the stitches from moving too much until I get a few rounds in. But at this point, yes, we're just going to keep knitting the foot of the sock until it's about three inches less than you need for the length of the foot. So you can see I sort of pinch with just a few fingers. I'm, my other fingers are folded under here. I'm trying not to grip them tightly or hunch up or anything like that. I do have a tendency to do that, so I try to remind myself to relax when I'm using short circulars. But that is all there is to show really for this part. The foot's gonna be plain stockinette, just so you can get used to using these short circular needles. Now mine are fixed circulars, so the tips are both the same length, but you can get interchangeable sets where you can get one that has like three inch tips and I think two inch tips. So if you can, you can put the shorter needle on this side because you're just holding it. And then the working needle, this one, try to get the longer tip on that side. And that little extra length can be helpful as well because then you can probably use an extra finger there to grip it. But yes, just please relax. Don't get tense and hold and grip things tightly because you'll just make it very uncomfortable for yourself. So here's a quick look at our sock again. We're gonna keep knitting the length of the foot till it's about three inches less. You can see that heel is quite deep. It's gonna add a lot of extra fabric right there. And we want a little bit of stretch as well. So just keep knitting in the round until it's time to place some lifelines and our waist yarn for this heel opening. So that's about three inches less than the total length you want for your, to your whole sock. Now it's time to stop and put in our waist yarn for our heel. There's a little process I do for this now. You can just knit across your heel stitches with your waist yarn and then start knitting the rest of your sock. But I don't love picking up those stitches from this little tiny sock yarn, these little stitches, they're hard to pick up. So I like to place some lifelines because I think it's easier to pick up your stitches from a lifeline than live stitches from that waist yarn. So we're gonna place some lifelines. So this is my beginning of round and I placed another marker here just so I know the halfway point. So this is my heel. It's gonna be right across the half the stitches. So if you wanna place a marker halfway Whatever your stitch count is, you're just gonna go count half of those stitches, put a marker. So this is our heel, that's gonna be our instep. That's just so we know where our heel is gonna be. The next thing I wanna do is place a lifeline. And I like to use embroidery floss for this. You could also use dental floss or anything pretty thin that's gonna stay in there. Now I cut a length that is the length of that heel plus a lot more to dangle out on either side basically. So like twice the length of your heel should be plenty. Then I split it in half, like there's six plies with this, so I split them into two groups of three plies. Sometimes they don't wanna split very easily, so just take your time. And I might be able to just use the whole thing in there, but I just think it's just easier if it's a little thinner. There we go. So I'm gonna set aside half of it for now. I'm gonna thread the other length onto my tapestry needle. So we're going to thread this onto these stitches here. We're gonna leave these stitches on the needle. I like to slide them up onto the cord. Then we're gonna take that tapestry needle and then just move it along that line of stitches, catching them underneath trying not to split them. We wanna get right into the center of those stitches. And after you've got a few on there, you can slide them onto that lifeline or slide the lifeline in there. Leave a long tail on the side. We wanna just leave that hanging right there and keep going across, slipping that, those stitches onto your needle. But we're leaving them on our needle as well. We're not taking these off our needle. We're just placing this lifeline here so we can come back and pick up these stitches later when it's time to knit our heel. So if you've placed that marker, you're just going to 
work this lifeline over to the marker. If you didn't, then just count your stitches as you're putting them on this needle. Make sure you have half the stitches. In my case, I have a 72 stitch sock. So I'm putting 36 stitches, which is half of them, onto this lifeline. There, now I can just take that tapestry needle out and I've got a long tail on either side. I could pull it from either side and it's moving freely. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Next thing I wanna do is knit a length of waist yarn right here. For waist yarn, I'm just actually gonna use my yarn from my project, the contrast color, and we're gonna knit from that marker to our second marker, just half your stitches in that waist yarn. I've got to get to my beginning of round, so I'm just going to work these last few stitches with my main color. Slip that marker, drop my working yarn, grab my waist yarn, I'm holding the tail in the other hand, and I'm just gonna knit across half these stitches. This is where the heel is going to be, so we just wanna Put a line of waste yarn in here. Then later on we can snip this out for our heel. So try not to catch that lifeline. Try to go between it and the stitches. So you can leave that lifeline nice and loose in there. So later on when we transfer our stitches we can just slip the lifeline out. So I'm coming up to that halfway point. I'm gonna knit this last stitch. Oh, careful of my lifeline. There. Now at this point, I'm going to cut this yarn. I'm gonna leave a long tail on this side. I can bring that right to the front between the needles. Then I'm gonna slip these stitches right back to my left needle. Just slipping them purlwise, not changing the stitch mount. Okay, so now we have our first lifeline and we have some stitches on waist yarn. Can bring that other tail to the front. Now we have to place another lifeline, but we need to work one round in our main color first. So I'm gonna knit around just once with my main color and then we're gonna place one more lifeline. So you're just treating these waist yarn stitches just like normal stitches. And of course, it's gonna be a little loose right there. You can tug on that a little if you want and just knit to the end of the round. Okay, I'm almost back at my beginning of round, so I'm just gonna stop there to keep my marker in place. So we have to place one more lifeline, just like we did here. We're gonna place one with the stitches that we just worked right there. So get the other half of that embroidery floss, if that's what you used. Thread it onto your needle. We're just like before, we're going to run it through the stitches that are on the needle. It's easier, I think, to just slide them up onto the cord and just slide that lifeline into place. Once they're all on there, we can take our needle out. So we should have three strands on either side. You can give that a little tug, make sure it's not caught on anything. So everything is good here. I've got three strands on both sides. I can remove this marker now. I've got my heel all marked. So at this point, we're just gonna keep knitting in the round for the leg of the sock, as long as you like your sock to be, at least an extra inch, just so you have something to come up on the back of the foot. So you can see, this is what we did right here. We placed our waist yarn there. So now we're gonna start knitting this part of the sock, even though it doesn't look like that right here. So you wanna keep knitting the leg. You can make it as long as you want. I like shorty socks, so I'm just gonna go for about an inch. Then we're gonna do our rolled cuff. And all we have to do for that is purl one row or one round. This isn't even absolutely necessary, but I wanna make sure I can stop that roll, especially where it's such 
a short sock, the longer your sock, the less likely you're probably gonna have to do that. But as a little precaution, that little pearl row can sort of stop it from rolling and rolling too far. And then we'll do a little bit more stockinette and then we'll bind off. So the leg of the sock is very, very simple. You're just gonna keep knitting in stockinette till it's as long as you want it to be. Stop and purl one round just before where you want your cuff. Then you're gonna knit five more rounds and then we'll bind off. So I'm gonna get that part done and come back and show you how to do the bind off. So I finished the length of the leg of my sock. I just like a shorty sock. You can see right here, I've knit that much above where the heel will be. And then I purled one round just to sort of stop the roll. When you have a short sock, sometimes that can just keep on rolling and I wanted to control that a little bit. And then I knit five more rounds. Now it's time to bind off. And we're gonna use Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off because we want a nice stretchy edge for our cuff. So we can remove our marker. So I'm gonna knit one just to set up. And then the pattern repeat is to do a reverse yarn over. So instead of bringing the yarn around like a regular yarn over, we're gonna start from behind, bring it up and over, and then knit a stitch. And then what we're gonna do is pull that yarn over and that first knit stitch over this just knit stitch. You can do them individually or at the same time if you want. Depends on how you want to do that. Now we're just gonna keep repeating that process. Reverse yarn over, knit one. And then pull that yarn over and that stitch over this last stitch on our needle. And I just split that stitch, so I'm gonna to try to catch it and fix it. There. And then you repeat that again. Reverse yarn over, knit one. And then if you wanna try catching both of those and bring them over the last stitch, careful not to drop that stitch. And that's all we're gonna keep doing. Reverse yarn over, knit one, and bring them both over. That extra yarn over gives us a lot of extra stretch in that bind off edge. So you're just gonna keep doing this till you've bound off all of your stitches. So I've bound off. We'll weave in our ends later, so I'm, I'm done with my shorty needle. If you want to, you can put your heel stitches on the short needle, but Eventually you're gonna to have to switch to double points or magic loop or some other method because there will be too few stitches So I figure that's an extra step. Just start with the needles you're going to end with But you can use the shorties if you want, but I'm going to set them aside for now Now the first thing I want to do is get rid of this waste yarn actually our stitches are not going to go anywhere They're on a lifeline so we can just pull this out. You can use the tip of a needle or a tapestry needle and just slip that out. So you're just gonna work your way across, taking this lifeline out. Our stitches aren't going anywhere. Leave your lifelines in there. Those stitches will stay on there. Now, if this really feels super nerve wracking, what you can do at this point is wash your sock. Once these stitches are washed, they're probably gonna wanna stay where they are. They're not gonna move. They're already doing that now. I haven't washed this sock yet. But if you're really nervous about that, wash your sock, let it dry, and then those loops are probably gonna stay in place even more than they want to now. So all we're just doing is taking out this row of waste yarn, not touching our lifelines or our stitches. Sometimes it might get snagged in there. If it does, I've got a snag right there. I'm just gonna snip that yarn and see if I can pull it out. There we go. And then I can just continue using the tip of a needle and pulling out that row of waste yarn. I've seemed to have snagged it again there. So I will just snip it again. There we go. So this will just take a minute. So go ahead and get yours removed as well and then we will pick up our heel stitches.
So I've removed my waist yarn. This is what we have now. We have this empty space where we need to put our heel stitches, but our stitches are fine. They're on waist yarn. So at this point, we're gonna get them on our needles. So you can use whatever method you like, whatever needles you like. I do like to start with like a size or two smaller just to get them on the needles and then I'll switch to the needles I wanna use. But that's totally optional. So you're just gonna look for your lifeline the stitches are, it's just running right through the stitches and we're just going to put those stitches on the needle. I'm leaving my lifeline in for now. I can pull it out afterwards, but we're just gonna go straight through and pick up all of those stitches. So count as you go or count after you get them all on. Make sure you have the stitches you need. I need 36 for each half of the heel. This part's not difficult, it's just a little bit tedious. So just go ahead and get all of those stitches back on the needles. You might find that some want to dip down and sort of get lost in there. So use the lifeline to pull the stitch back up into place so you can get your needle in there. This does tend to happen on either end. So those last few stitches can be a little, a little more tricky to get into, but just use the lifeline and the tip of your needle. There's my last stitch hiding over here. Once I pick that up, I'm gonna stop, count my stitches, make sure I have them all and then I can pull this lifeline out. Those last ones can be a bit tricky, so just use your lifeline to pull them back out. They sort of like drop down into the stitch beneath. So you just have to pull them back up. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna check. Oh, I missed that one, try that again. Sometimes you end up splitting a stitch as well, but we can check that as well when we do our first round. So I'm gonna just count my stitches real quickly. Okay, I have all the stitches I need so I can pull this lifeline out. It might catch, so we'd have to snip it again. It doesn't seem to wanna to come through on that side. So let me see, there it goes. Okay, so just gently pull it out. Don't pull out the other one yet or wait on this and pull it out after you've finished both sides if you want. I'm gonna try the other way. This seems to be catching on something. Okay, it's sliding out easy in this direction. There we go. So that one is done. Stitches are on the needle. I'm gonna repeat that for this half of the sock with another spare needle here. The same process all over again, just picking up these stitches, putting them back on a needle, and then counting to make sure they're all there and then pulling out that lifeline. So now we can actually start knitting. So grab your yarn. I'm using a contrast color and I'm gonna just knit these onto this needle just to get myself set up. And then we can start working our heel shaping. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do though is think about this part right here. We're gonna end up with holes. This kind of a heel where we added that row of waist yarn gives us a hole. There's nothing around that. It could be minimized if you skipped the waist yarn, but I prefer to put it in there just so I have something to work with and when I'm getting this part going. But we do have this big gap right here. And what I like to do is use these bars on either side to close it up. We're gonna use one on each side, but to start, we're gonna start with this needle here. If you look at the stitch that's on my needle, it's attached to this bar right there. So I'm gonna pick this first bar up. and put it on the needle so it's sort of leaning off to the right. Like if you we were gonna make a make one right, it's leaning off in that direction. And I'm gonna knit it together with this first stitch and that will help a little bit with that hole. It's not perfect, 
We might have to use our tails when we're done to close it up, but it does help a little bit. So it's a bit tight right now, so I'm gonna pull that around just to loosen it up, and then I can get, make sure I'm using the right needle, get in there and knit them together. Okay, leave yourself a tail. And now I'm just gonna knit across these stitches. I'm checking each one to make sure it's not split or accidentally dropped a stitch. This one looks like it's split, so I'm gonna sort of slip my needle in there to get the rest of it up on the needle and then knit it. So I'm just gonna knit to the end of this first needle and we're gonna pick up a running bar there and work an SSK. All right, coming up on the end of this first needle, I do have some split stitches, which is does happen when you're trying to pick stitches up with, from Lifeline. So, Okay, so this last stitch, I'm gonna slip it like I'm gonna slip an SSK, slipping it knitwise. Then I'm gonna use my needle tip to look for that running bar right here. It's attached to this stitch. We're gonna lift that up and we want it to lean off to the, to the left this time, like we're gonna work, uh, make one left. And then we're gonna slip this stitch back. We're gonna work them both through the back legs like an SSK. And hopefully that will help close up that hole a little bit. Now I'm done with this spare needle I had so I can drop that. And I'm gonna use magic loop for this. So I'm gonna pull this one out and work across in this direction. We're gonna repeat that whole process, even closing up the gaps again. So there's the stitch that's on my needle. I'm following that running bar, it's right here. So I'm popping that up onto the needle so it leans off to the right and knitting it together with that first stitch. It can be a little tight, so I'm gonna pull it around, make it loosen it up a little so I can get my needle in there, get my yarn, and work it tightly and work it tightly close to the stitch behind it on that whatever needle configuration you have just to close up any gaps. Hopefully that will take care of everything. If not, we'll have to use the tails of our, need our, of our heel when it's all finished to close up those gaps. But usually this is enough. Sometimes you might have still a little bit of a hole there, but there's really not much else we can do about that. So like before, I'm just gonna knit to the end of this needle, making sure I haven't split any stitches or dropped anything, and I have all the stitches I need for my heel. And we're coming up on that last stitch again, so we're gonna do the same thing. Slip it like an SSK, knitwise. Look for that running bar, picking it up from front to back so it leans off to the left. Slip this stitch back, knit them both through the back loops. There, so we've done our first setup round. Now we're gonna need some stitch markers because we are going to work our round heel shaping just like we did our toe. And we want to keep some markers in there to keep track of what we need to do. Now the number of markers you need is going to depend on how wide or how large your heel is. So I'm using magic loop, so I'm pulling out that back cord or back needle, putting these stitches up on the needle. And for this second round, now that we are all set up, we've tried to close up the gaps on each side and our stitches are all accounted for, we're all ready to work our heel. Now we're going to do another setup round. So you're gonna knit eight stitches and pay attention to this first stitch and work it tightly so we can close up any potential hole we might have there. We do have our yarn tail here, which we can use at the end, but I'm working a little firmly right there that yarn tail is making a big stitch, so I can pull on that too. So I'm gonna knit eight stitches and then place a marker. So double checking, two, four, six, eight. Place on my marker and repeat this all the way around. You're gonna knit eight and place a marker. And there is the end of another eight. And I've just got four left here. So instead of placing a marker there, I'm gonna use the halfway point for my magic loop as that marker. So I'm just gonna slide these stitches to the other side. Now I could put a locking marker here as a reminder, but I know that I need to do a decrease right there. So I'm, I'm good with that. So I'm gonna turn and continue that on the rest of the sock. Knit eight, place a marker, knit eight, place a marker until you get to the end of round. There is my last marker and I have eight more stitches to knit till I'm back at the beginning of round.
Okay, so now we are all set up. We've closed up our holes. We have our heel stitches ready to go. We have markers placed. Now we're gonna work our decrease round. So those markers are telling us when to work our decrease. So we're gonna to knit to two stitches before the marker. And then work a knit two together and slip the marker. And then we just repeat that process all the way around. Knit to two stitches before your marker. Knit two together and slip the marker. Now I'm, a, I'm on the first half of my sock heel and with Magic Loop I did not put a marker here but I know I'm coming up to the end of this next section of eight. I'm two stitches before. I'll work my decrease right here. If you forget that that's gonna happen, put a locking stitch marker there if you're using Magic Loop. I'm gonna turn and do this for the other half of the sock as well. Coming up on my last decrease right here. There, so that is how a decrease round works. And now we follow that by some plain knit rounds. You're just going to knit around six times then repeat that decrease round again, then knit five more rounds, repeat your decrease round, knit four rounds, repeat the decrease round, etc., etc., until you're just knitting two rounds and then repeating the decrease round. And then you'll just have a couple of stitches between the markers at that point. So follow the pattern. It will spell it out for you exactly. It's just like the toe, but instead we were increasing. Now we're going in the other direction and we are decreasing. So it's gonna have the same exact shape. The only difference is the number of rounds worked in between. For our toe, we just did a few rounds in between each decrease round or increase round. Now we're gonna add more so we get a longer heel. You can tell that our heel is longer or, than our toe is because we added extra plain knit rounds in between. So just follow the pattern. It tells you exactly how many rounds to do and then repeating the decrease round until we just have a few stitches left. So I'm just gonna work on my heel. It's really simple. You're just knitting around and then you're working decrease round and repeating the process until the heel is finished. So I'll come back and show you what we're gonna do right at the end with our final decrease round. So I just worked my last few rounds. You can see this is what things look like now that I'm working all those decreases. And it's my final decrease round with the markers. So your instructions will tell you on this final decrease round, you're going to remove the markers. So knit two stitches before the marker, which is just a knit one, knit two together, remove your marker. I'm just gonna do this all the way around. My last few stitches. Okay, so we have one final decrease round to work. We are just going to knit two together all the way around. So you're going to end up with half the stitches that you have. This is all that is left to do for our heel. You're just gonna knit two together all the way around. Last stitch, and I'm left with just a few stitches. I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving a long tail. And then the last thing to do is to close up these final few stitches. So thread that tail onto a tapestry needle, and we're just going to run this yarn through those remaining stitches to close them up. So you can slip them right to that tapestry needle. Just like that. And that is the sock heel. Pull it tight, and then I like to, once I pulled it tight, I like to run it through those stitches again. Sort of just running it around in a circle. And 
and then going right down the center and drawing it through to the inside. And then all that's left is to weave in the ends and your sock is finished. Give it a nice wash and a block and knit your other sock. Now that you've finished that first sock, it's time to cast on and knit the second. And while you're doing that, why not continue hanging out with me? I've put together this playlist with some knit and chat episodes about sock knitting specifically. How to get the best fit, choose the best yarns, and care for your socks, and lots of other good topics about sock knitting. So while you're knitting that sock, you can click through and watch those videos, and I'll see you in the next video.